So for the month of April, I'm really looking forward to doing something I did last year. From April 1st to April 30th, there's a virtual memory walk and recovery run. And this is all to raise awareness and to raise money for Rage Against Addiction. April 9th is the actual memory walk and recovery run, which is going to take place from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Senior Lane Regional Park in Bel Air. And yes, I will be there, but I'm walking. I'm not going to run. I will be walking. Now, the other thing is on May 21st in Bel Air from, I believe it's noon to midnight, there's a concert going on. This is the Emily Evans Concert for Hoop. It's at the Main Street Tower in Bel Air, and this also benefits Rage Against Addiction. And I am honored. I was asked by George Evans to um, come and interview some people as well as bring some bands on stage. So that's going to be May 21st in Bel Air. And, well, on this special episode of Rage Talk, we're going to be talking about both of them. I have Wendy and George here with me. Stay tuned. Those of you that have been listening to my podcast for a while know that I have a really big thing about addiction and making everyone aware of everything that's going on. Well, back in March, I met two ladies and had them on the podcast. And we went ahead and put our heads together. We decided to create something in an effort to bring awareness to communities about the devastating effects of addiction and also to spread the hope about the possibility of recovery. So with that said, this is Rage Talk. Special episode today. So I'm sitting here with Wendy from Rage Against Addiction. You have something big coming up in April. Yeah, we uh, have which our... last year was a blast. Our walk? Yeah. Well, we had a virtual walk last I know. year. Yeah. I it's... lost weight from that. <laughs> you did? You walked the entire month of April? Yeah. Awesome. And then when it was over, right. I stopped walking. <laughs> well, Same hopefully here. this year <laughs> it'll kick off, um, you know... The same thing for everyone. We're going to have our virtual event, which will be April 1st through the 30th, just like we did last year, which was our first year in doing that. And then we're able to have our in-person event again at Cedar Lane, and it's going to be on April 2nd. So anybody that has been, please join us again. And anyone who has not had the opportunity to come to our in-person event, um, we'd love to have you there. It's a really great opportunity to meet um, like-minded people. There'll be a bunch of resource tables. Um, we'll have a 5K. This year we're going to uh, partner with Charm City Run. Mm -hmm. So they'll be... Um, on site to time it and help us um, just fine tune some things. And then we'll have speakers and just all the rage stuff that anything you want to know about rage and our supporters and people that um, follow us. Uh, that's where we'll be April 2nd at Cedar Lane. So last year was only, it was just virtual, right? Yes, we so were not able to. Both? Yeah, we're going to do the entire month of April. We're going to kick it off um, the virtual on April. April 1st, and then the second is going to be our um, in-person run, and then the virtual route will be, uh, again, to Ocean City, Maryland, and uh, we're going to try to maybe end the event, we're hoping, fingers crossed, with a fundraiser down there at the end of April. So in stay, Ocean City. Yeah, so stay tuned if we can swing that. So anybody knows anybody in April that wants to have a fundraiser for Rage in Ocean City, please contact me at wendy at rageagainstaddiction.com. So what's the total miles for the virtual park? Oh, you're going to ask me that. Well, what was the last year? Was it'll it be 100? from here to OC, which is about 150, maybe 130, okay. you know, depending on the route. So there'll be a virtual route and you can follow us um, on the website again and you can track your miles and that type of stuff. The in-person is just a 5K, not just a 5K, it's a 5K. And you well, can walk let's around. Let's say I do the in-person. Am I allowed to count the in-person towards the virtual? Say that again. Happens in April. All right. So if I do the in-person, because that is in April. Right. I do the five. Wait a minute. Do I have to run? You can walk. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> so I walk the 5K. 
Which is what's that? Three yeah, miles? it would count as your miles. You would okay, log them so in. Sure, okay. absolutely. Yeah, and then mm. last year, and we'll do this again. We'll have um, a winner for most miles, and then we will also have a winner for um, most money raised during the virtual. So, At, when can people start signing up? Um, soon. We're working on that right now. Soon, I love that. Soon. What soon? <laughs> I'm hoping in the next two weeks registration uh. will be open. Oh, well, by the time this goes up, it'll probably be open. Yeah, I guess. Last year, because like I said, it was a blast. And unfortunately, during Christmas, I put on weight. Like I said, I wasn't going to. Um, How many participants did you have? Because I know it was good. I like the virtual idea. Well, we're hoping to get it, you know, Nationwide, our winner of the most miles, I believe, was in like Wisconsin. Really? She logged in the most miles. So we um, sent her an Amazon gift card as her prize. And then the uh, most funds raised uh, was a weekend in Ocean City that was donated by one of our supporters. So we're, we're working on that as well. So there'll, there'll be something at the end for most money raised and, of course, most miles as well. Remember the person's name in Wisconsin? I don't. Wasn't last name wasn't Jaeger, was it? J A E G E R. I would have yeah, to ask Mia. Jaeger. No, I oh. got friends out there, and if it was one of them, I'm going to be upset. I doubt <laughs> so, it. <laughs> actually, I'd be happy because they 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 participated. So. No, but so yeah, so it's one of those things where you don't have to be local to participate, and you know we're just trying to get the word out that everybody can. We really wanted the. The, this year's theme is uh, together. Let's see how many miles we can walk to support recovery and fight addiction. I like that. I, with these, because I've never, I, I'm not a runner, and yours, I think yours was the first one I tried to do virtual. And you can create a group, a team, or whatever. Correct. What's the secret in that? Because I kept inviting people. Nobody joined my team. Nobody likes me. I guess maybe give them a call. Tell them. I did. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I guess you just need to get them people who are willing to support the cause. So am I allowed to have you guys on my team? Sure. I'll be on your team. No, you won't because you're starting your own team, I'm sure. Well, I start Team Kelsey. So that's oh. for my daughter. And right, then yeah. usually my family members. So you could do like a team um, in support of someone or you could do like Team Harford County or you could do, do Team Harford County Living. I forget what I did last there year. There you but go. Either way, I said that to all my friends, called my family, told them. and. Well, I think you should do Team like Harford County Living. I could do that. Yeah. Who are your followers? Yeah, that'd be awesome. I don't know, because if I don't get anybody to join, that's really going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all the, all, like I got people out there say they follow me. Apparently, they're lying. I don't like that. Well, tell them you don't want them you, to follow you. You want them to walk with you. I definitely would. I had a blast last year. Yeah, it was which good. Is weird, even it, was it was good. Virtual, it was virtual. It just, and it, it's. To me, it motivated me because it was giving me a reason to get out there and walk every day. Even bought one of those watches. Fitbit or Apple watch. Watch, watch. Yeah, or something. something like that. Which I haven't worn since the, the virtual walk ended. Um, but no, this this is great. And it's you guys got to do it more than once a month, though. I mean, more than once a year. Well, we'll work on that. Let's see how this one goes. You know, the in-person is really very um, near and dear to our heart. It was our first event that we ever really had. Um, And again, the first one, we had 300 people. And then within one or two years, we had over 1,000. So that was amazing that it had grown that much. We had people from all over Maryland and even outside of Maryland participate. So we're hoping that the virtual piece, we can really kind of like just, you know, broaden that, that base of followers to, to just join in with rage. Here's an idea probably for next year, since you're already starting on this year. And I'm thinking of the movie Forrest Gump. (laughs) Seriously. um, Because here from Ocean City, okay, 150 miles, but why not do something where it's, the whole year, and it's a virtual walk. Walk across through, the country. You know, walk across the country to every state. That'd be awesome. Except for Hawaii, because, you know, you'd have you to could swim. You could kayak. Who's going <laughs> to kayak in the Pacific Ocean? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> All right, so tell everybody again how they re- how they sign up, how they um, register. Well, we're going to have a registration page and information 
can be found on our website, and that is rageagainstaddiction.org. So you can go there. You can check out our Facebook page as well, and that's Rage Against Addiction. And uh, there will be plenty of details coming up on social media. Perfect. So now we go into May, right? Because that's the only thing. You got April, the virtual walk, the concerts in May. May what? 21st. May 21st. What's after that? Um, There's nothing in the summer, right? Um, typically, we would have um, some small local fundraisers in June. Okay. Um, historically, it was uh, quarter auctions and bingos. But with COVID, we haven't had an opportunity to do that. I always let my team take off the month of July. Yay, no fundraisers in July. God, she's nice and then... Um, <laughs> August is Overdose Awareness Month. We right. have September, which is National Recovery Month. And then October is just uh, for our Rage Club kids. We do a fall um, event for them. And then November, the- thankful for those in recovery. Uh, the Emily Evans um, Concert for Hope Foundation actually was the ones who provided dinner to our girls this Christmas. So that was amazing. Thank you. Welcome. When's the when was the bull roast? The bull roast was in September for National September. Recovery Month. Okay. Yes. I can't keep track of everything. So we're hoping to do that again. So we we're hoping, okay. you know, that that's going to be. All right. So we have George Evans here with us, and George puts together a concert every year. Uh, and this will be the second year. Oh, the second year. Okay. Oh, why does it seem like it's been longer than that? Well, you actually had to postpone it because of COVID. Is that correct? We were going to have it the year before okay. in September and decided to put it off the six, seven months just to let COVID try to. You know, that's the weird thing about COVID because it, it, to me, I remember seeing something advertised about it. But COVID just plays with everybody's mind. It's like, where did the year go? Exactly. So it seems like this would really be your third, but it's your second. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's the second. And we were very fortunate that uh, the day of the concert was the first day that Governor Hogan opened up uh, and ended the restrictions right. inside, which allowed us to sell a couple hundred more tickets, and we, we had sold out. And what's because the name of the concert? It's the Emily Evans Concert for Hope. Concert for Hope. Uh, before we talk about the concert, go into Emily. Tell us a little bit about Emily. Well, I guess we all have our stories. Uh, Emily was a great kid, uh, loved to dance in the rain, that type of child, just Mm -hmm. made friends easy, uh, always tried to treat everybody with respect. Uh, We're not exactly sure how she fell into addiction or how it started. Uh, My recollection is that she got hurt at work, uh, got painkillers for her back. And uh, didn't think much of it. It right. just was a short-term fix to her back pain. But there was no short-term to it. Yeah. Uh, Emily became addicted to opioids. Uh, she ended up snorting them. Uh, we found out through the years of things missing in the house. Uh, oh, God. Guitars and jewelry and things like that that she had a problem. Right. Uh, we tried to get her... In the treatment, she refused. Uh, it got to the point where I actually went to the court and tried to get her put in a hospital, right? And which they we did, but unfortunately, because of her age, she was over twenty-one. Uh, she told the physician she was fine, God. and they had to release her. Emily finally did uh, seek help. She went on Suboxone which uh, we had a good year and a half right. of nothing. She was just doing well. Uh, became pregnant with a boyfriend, uh, and her son now is seven years old, great kid. His father is a great dad, and uh, they're both in our lives. Emily, her health insurance lapsed in May, unbeknownst to us, unbeknownst to her when she went to refill her Suboxone. Based on what we heard from the Sheriff's Department uh, for the, the the week up to her death, she was buying Suboxone on the street. Oh, God. Trying to get it. And 
when there was no more Suboxone to be had. She went out the uh, Friday night before her death and got heroin. It was laced with uh, fentanyl. Oh, Jesus. And two days later, Emily passed. God. It didn't help with all the years of the opioid abuse right. because of snorting, her lung capacity, everything went down. And you know, I always say don't let the way they died defend the way they lived. Uh, that was not Emily. Yeah. That, you know, it's, it was an addiction, and it's a disease. And for someone to go through that, if you haven't, when you see someone on the street or you see someone you know they have a problem, we're quick to label them. But yeah. until you live through it, both through a parent's eye or a friend's eye or a brother or sister's eye, and see it in their eyes that they're trying to fight. And the pain of the withdrawal is so great. Uh, you just you hold them, yeah. you know, and you just do your best. Uh, we weren't successful, and the addiction won, but... Through Emily's passing, I said the day of her funeral, I was not going to let her die in vain. Right. And that uh, I was going to do something. It just took took about five years to kick it in. But because of what happened to Emily, hopefully we're able to help someone get into recovery, help fund someone, help rage against addiction, the Klein Family Harper Crisis Center. Yeah. That's our two main... Uh, don't you know people that we donate to? That we we say if we could save one person, then it's we've done our job. You made an impact, yeah. So and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to save one person, help one person, and this year we're going to be adding. Uh, I don't know if we can call them scholarships, but for those that don't have insurance, that can't get treatment, we want to provide that. Really? So we're going to try to do that in addition to giving the Rage Against Addiction and the Client Family Heart for Oh, Christ that's Center. great. So, yeah, because God knows there's got to be a lot of people out there that you know, don't have insurance. Well, as Wendy knows. Especially now. It's it's getting worse. It's, yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a, a pandemic. It's a tough, yeah, it's a tough disease. Um, I see it because, you know, as you know, Rage has the, the women's houses and you intimate, I, I become very like intimately involved in these women, um, just getting to know them, seeing them, you know, right. weekly or, or a couple times a month. And over time, you know, seeing them on their journey of recovery. But I also get to see like, this other side that sometimes isn't so great. Like they think that they're ready to leave and then they leave and then they relapse. And so, you know, there's not like a, a one size fits all recovery. And so, you know, with rage having daughter's house and sister house and, and the other, you know, sober living houses in the community, you know, I'm trying to kind of find, you know, what, what is the missing piece? Where are we missing it? Because you have some people who, you know, will leave and they have sustainable recovery and then you'll have someone who leaves. And then in a week later we hear that, you know, a, they passed away, B, you know, they want to come back or C, you know, they're, they're, down in Baltimore City, you know, so, you know, there's not that one path. So, you know, with the help of other nonprofit organizations and, you know, like George and and the other local nonprofits that we have in this area, um, we kind of all are working together to try to like kind of be those safety nets. So, you know, Rage, what Rage does, you know, we don't fund people into treatment, but there are, you know, some organizations, ACR, Mm -hmm. who was able to help people get into sober living and and work with other organizations. And then like if, if Emily Evans, um, concert for hope can, can be another safety net for someone else that maybe, you know, someone reaches out to that. That's really what it's all about. So now the Emily Evans concert for hope, that's not a separate 501 C three. This is just an event you put on every year. That is, that's how it all started. So, uh, we became the Emily Evans Fund or the Emily Evans Foundation. Okay. Uh, is because of the concert and that we want to be able to raise funds right. where we can get they, we can give the people the tax donations. Okay. For donating the money. 
So initially um, you just wanted to have the concert and then yes. it kind of morphed That's into right. you yeah. um, having the 501c3. Yeah, so, um, so you could give back. Last year we started, uh, we contacted the Main Street Tower mm-hmm. and Renato Bonatempo immediately said yes, anything he can do to help. It's an awesome family. It is. And it, people don't know how giving they are. Yeah. Uh, and he sees it because of the industry that he's in. Yeah. Uh, and he sees it on the streets of Bel Air. And he says, I want to help. So we decided I was going to get four bands. And we did it from 7 to midnight. Uh, my band came out of a 35-year retirement. Uh, and then friends that have bands, they immediately said, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. And in a year of COVID, we, uh, in three days, we sold out what was then a 50% capacity in, of 220-some people. And ended up with over 400 at the concert. Wow. <laughs> uh, raised about $35,000. Nice. So in the first, for the first year, uh, we made a donation to both uh, Rage Against Addiction and the Client Family Harper Crisis Center. We had stuff we had to pay for, like the tent that was right. outside. So we learned a lot. And I don't know if I'm trying to grow it too fast. But I, we're, we're trying to raise $100,000 this year. So, you can do it. Well, with the help That's of the community. That's why we're here today. Yay. Yeah, with the help of the community <laughs> well, and the businesses. And, you know, when you said you're trying not to, you know, grow it too fast. I, I really feel like that's what happens with nonprofits. And to be honest with you, like my story is not that much different than yours. So when before Kelsey passed away, I wanted to kind of create some safety nets for people like her that were st- struggling with addiction that I felt like there was a need. There mm-hmm. was a few organizations that I really wasn't aware of at the time because this was back in 2014, 13, 14, when people were talking about it. Like my, my daughter's running around, you know, with a problem and I'm trying to reach out to friends and fam- friends of hers, family, and nobody wanted to talk to, to me mm-hmm. about it. They literally were like closing the doors like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't want my husband to know you're calling me. Don't email me. This is a family email. Like it was, it was serious. And I, and I have really no idea. Um, so anyway, so that was kind of why I did it. And after she had passed away, I had already started the nonprofit organization, but after she passed away, it really catapulted and it went so, it it was growing so fast that like my head was spinning. So like the first two years of my grief, like is when rage kind of went from zero to 60. And I was like literally in this reactive mode trying to figure it out. So that's really what's showing that you're very successful in what you're doing. So you can't go too fast. Just let it go. It (laughs) it really does. uh, And where my wife, Nina, it's hard for her to be involved in this, which she is very much involved. Right. Uh, and same with my older daughter, Erin, uh, because it brings back the memories and it's just what we're doing now. Why wasn't, why didn't we know about Rage Against Addiction or the client family Harper Christ Center was just being, just being built, being built. Yeah. <clears throat> so why wasn't there any programs? Why wasn't it out there? And it, at times, they're like, it's not fair. Why, mm-hmm. why did it have to be Emily? Where my uh, middle daughter, Shauna, uh, jumped all in, too. So when we decided to do it, uh, we started with four. This year, we're going from uh, gates will open at 11 a.m. at the Main Street Tower and then the lot in between the sheriff's office and the Main Street Tower. And we will have two stages. First band goes on at noon. Last band will be performing at 11 o'clock at night, so it'll be 12 continuous hours of wow. rock and roll music. Uh, uh, an Irish uh, folk rock band is also playing probably one of the biggest in Who Wait Baltimore. a minute, who's that? The Shamrogues. Okay. They're, playing. They're, they're pretty huge. They played at the Irish Festival. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, we have Atomic Light Orchestra, uh, which is big in this area, and Tri-State. Uh, the Rescue Party. Weeds over Woodstock, <laughs> Brickfoot, yeah, uh, Bad Love, my group Crying Shame, Undercover. And I know I'm forgetting some bands. Uh, there's a, that's the one thing. Yeah, it's, there's it's, a lot of bands out there. 
it's it's some good groups. And just it, in Maryland alone. I mean, and some of these bands have you know seven thousand followers which yeah, yeah that's us, the awesome part it really this is, is. The, the thing we're getting you know to get some of these groups that we've gotten uh is big because oh josh christina band uh it was big in this area now and then his girlfriend kata hay her band kata hay was uh in the final knockout round of the 2016 yeah. season at, of the voice yeah so they'll both be there so we're waiting on one more confirmation for the last band and it's a big one, so we're got a awesome. bridge cross for that one. That's great. So we're looking Can you to raise the name of that band. Not not, not yet. confirmed okay. yet. Not confirmed. Not confirmed. You're who? So we we're you. also going to have vendors at the uh, event. So I have approximately fifteen vendors sewing different wares. Uh, of course, the tower be able to get food, drink, mm-hmm. things going on there. We will have an outside stage, so it's going to be back and forth, uh, and we are. Waiting on sponsorships for the live stream. So we're looking to go all out. And next year might be two venues. So outside there between the sheriff's office and Main Street, how many people can you get in there? It's a four, 425 inside. Uh, we're probably looking around five to 600 outside. Okay. And you have to remember... They're not. People aren't going to come and stay from eleven right. in the morning. So you minute. can right. actually like have. You can once you get your ticket, which will be twenty five dollars. That's it. Yep, you'll get a wristband. You can't. We'll be checking if you're leaving, and you can come back in. But people will come and stay for two, three, four hours and leave. But we'll be getting walk up traffic. Some people will be showing up at six, right. depending on the bands that they want to see. And what day is this on? This will be Saturday, May twenty first. So it, it's it's going to be big, and we, we we had some great sponsors. And this year's event, uh, we put the naming rights up, and our sponsorship letter hasn't even gone out for this year's event. And one of our state sponsors from last year asked what the naming rights was, and it's I said, well, be your company presents or right. the Emily Evans Concert for Hope presented by. So you're going to be the main sponsor. And he goes, well, how much is it? And my daughter says, well. The bidding starts at five thousand. The bidding, I love that. You're going to put it up for bidding, and he says, uh, "Nah, how much to buy it right now? If I give you a check for ten thousand dollars, will you take it off the letter?" So we'd like to thank Consolidated Industries Incorporated. Uh, so it'll be the Emily Evans Concert for Hope presented by Consolidated Industries Incorporated. Nice. So in Harford County uh, business stepped right up. So that we are one tenth of the way to our goal. All right. So for next year, does the Main Street Tower cater? I believe they do. They do have caterers. So does the APG Federal Credit Union Arena allow caterers in there? Because I see you outgrowing this in Bel Air. Well, we had checked into the Equestrian Center. They only hold four outside events a year, and they're booked every year. It's booked in advance. Uh, we have looked into that thinking, you know, maybe somewhere in Aberdeen, a little baseball park they have up there. Oh, so yeah. That could be in the future. Uh, the Arena APG, I would like to see them join us as a sponsor. Uh, didn't hear anything back last year, but we're going to go after them again this year. I'm also contemplating uh, the tower's been very good to us. Mm-hmm. So... You want even to keep, even if you outgrow, you want to keep them have. involved. So even if we go and maybe have six, seven bands next year at the tower, and have another venue down the street, or the concerts going on at the same time, and people are just they can go back and forth between the different venues. And I see this hopefully, just like a lot of these five hundred one three Cs that go national, the uh, Coman for the Cure. Mm-hmm. I see that as where. This concert is held not only in Bel Air, but in Ocean City and in Ellicott City. Right. And on that same day, it's the Emily Evans Concert for Hope. Like next year, it's going to be Takes Over Bel Air. I'm hoping it takes over Maryland, where this grows and this money is going to help, be it in Ellicott City, it's going to help an organization out there that is doing the same as Rage Against Addiction or... Like a local climb. live aid... Yeah. Oh, that's that's cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that that 
let's get past this year and then uh, have, not have all my committee members, which we wouldn't have been able to do anything without the girls, right. the friends of my daughter, uh, and my daughter's my wife that really pitched in and made made it what it was. They, I, I was able to uh, sit on one of their committees for you know a minute just to hear what was going on because we were invite. I was invited, and he's got a really good team. How really many, good I was team. Just saying, how many people you got on the team? I think now it's up to ten. Uh, okay, ten committee members, uh, and the, we try to find their strengths. We have a couple that they're doing sponsorships. Uh, Ryan, who does our media, is you got in graphics. Mm-hmm. Uh, social media, and then just pitching in wherever they can. Right. Uh, trying to get the volunteers and things like that. There's a lot going on, and we. I'm not going to say I'm a dictator, but because it, this kind of started in my head, I, I'm kind of stubborn. Yeah. When I want to <laughs> want to do something, and they try to reel me back in, and say, "Look, you really need to think about doing this," and they, between all of us together, we're able to make it work. Right. So it's uh, just sometimes it's hard as a old Irish Catholic. It's your baby, man. It, it mean, is. Well, I can <laughs> well, t- totally relate to that. Yeah. Our baby. Yeah, and I can relate to that. That's kind of how I get with rage sometimes, where you know it's it's you know your vision and yeah. you're the one who kind of like you know birthed it so you know you kind of like hold on to it but you need help and you know when you have a really good team which i'm blessed with a very good team too it, it makes yes, it makes mm-hmm. a very big difference and you can't you just can't do it on your own and there's a time i mean I, in my professional career uh i was in the automobile business and a manager for 26 27 of the 32 33 years it's hard to delegate sometimes because you want it done your yes. way. And I try to delegate, and then it's, I guess, the uh, a sign of a good leader is when you have the confidence to delegate something to someone, let them do their job. Mm-hmm. Lead from the back. And they mm-hmm. have surpassed all our expectations, so, and my expectations, so it's, uh, I'm blessed. And I'll be... We wouldn't be able to do this without them because I'd be, mm. it's I'd, be a lot. I'd be at the Harford it's County a Crisis lot. Center. It's, <laughs> it's, just, it's just, it's, it's a load. Yeah, it is a lot. Nonprofit is what I've said before, and I'm sure I'm not the first person that said it. It's, it's a labor of love. It and is. especially on you have to love what you're doing. this level, when you get to like, you know, the gigantic nonprofits, you know, you're not really working with the founders anymore. But when the founders are really still in the day to day and doing like all the work and are the vision, it is totally a labor of love. You know, you can't you can't do it any other way. You know, it's just it's just kind of how. Yeah. And it, just our vision of this. No one in our family, no one on the committee, no one profits from this. The money, if it's paying for the tent or it's paying for the stand that holds the interview banners, Mm -hmm. uh, for the banners that were outside, other than that, all the money went directly to Rage Against Addiction and the Hartford Klein Crisis Center. We kept a little bit back, which allowed us to provide dinner for uh, both my sister's house and my daughter's house, Christmas dinner for the girls. Yeah, that was really awesome. there, and we... Also put together gift boxes for each one of them, and that was very gratifying. And to meet some of them when we delivered it, uh, I was watching you. I was watching you guys on the camera, and they like were in there for a really long time. I'm like, what are they doing? Are they like eating that food in there? What are they? I'm just kidding. So we will be committing that uh, year after year. It would be our honor to be able to provide Aww. that for the, the girls, That's and awesome. hopefully spread that to some other houses. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. They appreciate it. You know. Um, you can see the difference when the house is like truly blessed with that type of thing. Like when they're able to focus on their recovery because they're provided for and the, you know, just the basics needs are being provided for. There's a different kind of um, feeling in yeah. the house. Well, it's nice to know someone cares. Mm-hmm. And that's, I guess, between Wendy, ourselves and all the other groups that are out there trying to do something. We do care about these people. Right. And uh, that's that's how it should be for everything, you know. Yeah. You, or we end up with a lot that's going on today. 
Mm-hmm. So we just need a little bit more love and a little bit more caring. But the other good thing is, too, you guys care and you're making it vocal. You're making it seen. There are a lot of people that care and they don't do that. They don't. They're not vocal about it. They. They're not. At, and I don't know if it's because they're shy or if they're scared to. It's hard. It, yeah, well, yeah, it's hard. But it's, they, it's, it's very it's, hard, especially with the addiction. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a stigma. You know, there's mothers a, against drunk driving. For that woman to start that yeah. program. I mean, it's very hard to come out of that shell that we put ourselves or we wrap ourselves around because of the loss that we mm-hmm. dealt with. And we all deal with it differently. Like I said, my wife, it's hard. Yeah. But she fights through it and does it. Me, this fuels me to want to do more. And to make change. And yeah. So it, it's just, it, we all deal with it in our own way. Uh and we're always looking for volunteers, just like I'm sure for the for the your 5K run, the people that are going to that that want to try to help out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know you can come that day and you can speak about the event. Bring flyers. Yeah, yes, so we, you can have a we table. Were bring tickets. Uh, bring we tickets. Have, have a table. Tickets. Yeah, we we'll put. We there you go. Actually, speaking of that, the tickets and all. It, do you guys have a website where? People can go purchase yep. If tickets. you go to the Emily Evans Concert for Hope Facebook page, uh, we will be uploading our website where you'll be able to directly buy tickets online, T-shirts online, should you want to be a sponsor or donate. Okay. Uh, it'll have the live stream address. So we'll also be having a uh, online auction as well as, of course, silent auction at the event. Okay. So that'll be going up. Uh, I believe it'll be 100 days out, which is sometime in February, beginning of February. So tickets will be going on sale in about uh, three weeks. Three, so weeks. for people that, you know, it, even after the concert, if people want to make donations to you, how do they do that? Just go to the Emily Evans Concert for Hope Facebook page, and okay. we will have our donation page up. Okay. And again, all the money goes directly to... Uh, helping Rage Against Addiction, the Klein Family Harper Crisis Center, and towards the scholarships for those that can't or don't have insurance to pay right. for treatment. We want them, you know, to help them get treatment or get into these sober living houses. Right, and sometimes, you know, it's not them paying for the entire amount of treatment, but contributing, you know, on some level is mm-hmm. often enough, you know. It just, if anyone... And Wendy will tell you, it's it's the five, ten, twenty five dollar donations Helps that add a lot. up. And you know, we again, we're very blessed in Harford County that we have uh, our county executive, uh, Barry Glassman. Harford County has been great for us. The town of Blair has been very helpful. Uh, all our stage sponsors, the band sponsors, that paid good money. And not expecting that big of a return because we were so new. Right. But they wanted to do something. When you have a the Newberry Bakery, small company, mm-hmm. uh, I think it was the third company that said that, you know, we were asking for a donation, hoping, you know, take a half a page, whatever, or make do, donate some donuts. Yeah. And they said, well, we'll be a stage sponsor. And that was our top sponsorship last year. Uh well, that's a lot of dough. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the drum. Oh, jeez. <laughs> the cymbals and the snare drum. Yes. It's a lot of dough. And we needed it. This is going in the wrong direction. <laughs> but uh, And, you know, the Klein ShopRite, uh, the Lawn Doctor, all these little ones, uh, Harford Mutual Insurance Company, all these companies. And then we had great Masters of Ceremonies. We were lucky enough to have Tyler Daniel from WXCY, yep. so it's 103.7. Yeah, I got to talk to him. Okay. 103.7, I forget what they call it. Now they have two FM stations, I believe. And then uh, Jeremy Kahn from 105.7 The Fan. Those two guys were absolutely fantastic, and they'll be joining us again this year, and we have some other big names uh, going to be coming in, and we'll be doing interviews throughout the day right? with the county executive, Sheriff Gaylor. Uh, a lot of big big names will be coming up, so we're, we're looking forward to the event, and we hope to see you all there. It's just, we need your help. 
We need you to your support. We need you to be there because there are those that need you. Right. And we how we end up uh, end every one of our posts. It's together we can make a difference. And that's and we can and we can. It, yeah. We just you know have to just stay focused and work together. That's what mm-hmm. we're very meaning. Rage is very um, honored that you are including us as um, part of this. Last year we were there to sell some T-shirts. We'll be there again. Probably not twelve to eleven, but we'll be there, or maybe we'll be there in shifts. But yeah, it it was amazing. <laughs> I'm not a night owl. <laughs> well, you can- <laughs> <laughs> well, we love you, and it doesn't you know. I know some of the girls were saying maybe we can volunteer and help in some way. Maybe they can sell your t-shirts. Volunteers always Oh, yeah, absolutely. You you have your table set up. We're going to be side by side with our tables on the other side. So it will be outside under listening to some good music. Going to be some good rock and roll being played, folks. Saturday, Uh, May 29th? Saturday, May 21st. Or May 21st. So it's Saturday, May 21st. Gates open at 11. First concert, first band goes on at noon. And uh, just go to the Emily Evans Facebook page. You'll see everything about the concert, everything that's upcoming, the bands that'll be playing, what you can do to help support our cause. Thank you, George. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. For more information, you can go to our website at rageagainstaddiction.org or contact Rachel at 443-504-8488. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Hill Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Harford, and Cecil Counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Best Home Improvement Contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Heel Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's best roofing contractor and Baltimore's best roofing contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, look no further than Tar Heel Construction Group. Visit their website at tarheelconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410 410- 6387021 experience the excellence and community impact for yourself tar hill construction group building excellence one roof at a time